Hey guys, welcome back to the Gamer's Vault. I'm your host, James, aka Outbreak Survivor. Today on the Gamer's Vault, as you can see from the title, of course, is the Sega CD. Um, I went ahead and I got the Sega CD. It wasn't for me, actually. I got it from a customer of mine. Um, cause I, like I told you guys in the last video, I have my own IT consulting company for my local area, and one of them was like, listen, I, I need someone to repair an old console. Can you do it? Of course, I jumped at the challenge, you know, because that's just the way I am. I love working on broken and, uh, you know, broken consoles and everything like that. That's what I love to do for. And I thought it would be a great idea. And, of course, I got the customer's permission to post the, the video online before doing it. And so, the wrong, what's wrong with the Sega CD, as you're going to see in the video, is that it had no power. The repair wasn't so bad at all. It did give me a couple of snags here and there, but nothing to be too concerning about, to be honest with you. Um, it was kind of fun, so I invite you guys to watch. I'm not gonna, I'm not even gonna talk any further. I want you guys to take a look, and I'll see you at the end of the video. Hey everybody, um, today we are working on a Sega CD. Um, it's open right now, to save us time and effort. And um, I'm doing this for my company, uh, Double JIT Consulting. Like I stated before, it's, it's really interesting how these systems were built they're very simplistic the what's wrong with this system right here is there is no power the customer got in touch with us through our website and uh, they were like listen do you fix consoles I said yes we definitely do uh, I have a console it doesn't work what is going on so I said okay cool let's take a look at it the main thing what's going on with this is no power when you plug the power into it it doesn't work and the reason why it doesn't work is, you know, the con beside the console being old, it has fuses. It has really small type fuses, and they kind of look like this. And I'm going to bring the board up so you guys can see it. The fuse is this, this little stem. I'm going to try to put it in the light so you guys can see it. Um, let me bring you up a little closer. All right. So it's a stem that's right over here. Now, this is the one that always dies. It goes out. It happens. Normally, you take a multimeter tester to it. I'm not going to do that because, honestly, I know exactly what's going to happen. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace it. I got to uh, order the new replacements for it, 2.5 amps. And on live, on our camera here, I'm going to show you what it is to replace this unit. And it's not that bad. The only thing I do have a problem with Sega is their sloppiness. They are very sloppy um, on how they did their work. So, what I'm going to go ahead and do, I'm going to make sure you guys see it in the shot. I'm going to take the old one off, and then I'm going to solder on the new one. So, the first thing I want to do is, let me double check here. It is right over here. It's right here. So, I went to Radio Shack and I got this desoldering tool, which I love these desoldering tools. And what you're going to do is you're going to put it over the unit, right? And you suck it. <laughs> it's a little pain in the butt. It takes a little while because remember these things have been on there for a long time. So. Give me a second here, everybody. Like I said, it's been a while for this unit, so... And Radio Shack stuff is okay, but I don't have the professional tools for the, the soldering gun. They're kind of expensive. But as you can see, some of it went off, you see? It takes a minute. It takes a minute. See? And the reason why this is important is because when you when I go ahead to pull this out, what's going to happen is um, we need to make sure that we have enough leverage in the room there. It's hard. It really is when you get to this point. 
the hardest part is to get this off. After that, it's gravy train on biscuit wheels. Alright, so that looks like that came off too. Let's see, do I have... Give me a second, guys. I'll show you guys in a minute here. No, needs a little bit more on one side. So one came off, the other one is still giving me a hard time, but it's not so bad. I don't think Sega built this to last, to be honest with you. But it's okay, you know, Sega and its point. So one side is coming out perfectly. The other one, not so much. So we're going to have to do the other one again. I think I might have to clean this unit it up for the customer as well when we sell it back to him, when we give it back to him, excuse me. Okay. Give me a second, guys. I'll show you what it looks like so far. It's coming off, but just it's taking its time while it's doing it. And you want to take yours, you don't want to break any points here. I'll use my soldering iron to do the next points right here give it a little tap on my side because one is already coming out the other one is going to give me a hard time which is alright it was come to be expected the main thing that happens uh, to these units is the lens that's right here that goes bad sometimes and then you have to replace it that's not so bad the only thing that is, is this fuse. This fuse here, being in my existence. And it's so cheap, too. I think I got the fuse for like five bucks. The new one. Oof, that didn't, that wouldn't look so good. Sorry about that, guys. Like I said, it's, when you get this, uh, desoldering gun from, this is desolder, this is a desolder sucker. All it does is take out the solder. When you get these from like Radio Shack, it was not, it's more of a hobbyist thing, but I didn't have my solder gun. It's coming out now, guys. I'll show you about it in a minute. Looks like it's, there you go. So, the main thing is, if, if you can see really carefully, uh, you want to make sure that you get the clean holes, which I did, right? And it came out here perfectly. So, boom. Now, I'm going to keep this to the side, and there's a reason why for that, and I'll tell you that, that in a minute. Uh, oh, by the way, when you're done with your desolder sucker, it is done. Please do yourself a favor. I burned myself a couple of times. Not really the best in the world, but you want to remove it. Just shut it down. Get rid of it. For now. And the reason why for this is because... You don't want to burn yourself when you're working on the project because the next thing you're going to be doing is working with your actual soldering pen. Try to put it somewhere safe as well while it, de while it powers down, I should say, because it's definitely going to be hot. I'm going to put this over here. Sorry about the weight. I don't want to burn myself while I'm working on the next part of the project. All right, so the next thing you're going to do, or I'm going to do, is take a look at my, uh, my little... Evans here. So, so the reason why I do this is because one goes on one side, one goes on the other. Like kind of like positive, negative on a car battery. So, once I solder this on, I'm gonna pause the camera for a minute. I'm gonna cover this back up so you guys can actually see it in power, in power mode. That's what we're gonna do next. Now. The reason why they're long, so that way it gives you a good grip on it, but to be honest with you, what's going to wind up happening is, once you get these soldered in there, you're going to use, you're gonna, after you solder it in, you're going to use a nail clipper to clip off the ends. It's, they're too long. You can't keep them in there. And if they grind out, they grind out on this metal, and you're screwed. You don't want to grind this out. You burn it out, and you burn out the board this time, and you don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do is make sure the holes, goes right in the hole, like everything else. 
and it kind of looks like like it did before, right? Okay. And the easiest part, when you do a soldering job, no matter what it is, please, if you're younger, have your parents help you, whatever, to make sure you do it. You bring the solder to the point. You never bring the point to the solder. It doesn't make sense. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Take the soldering pen. You make sure that zip. See how it's already burning. You want to bring it here. I like to use my breath, but it doesn't help too much. And you bring it to the point. You bring it to the point. Now you don't need that much, but I like to be secure. I don't know what people do when they get those little tiny points. I like to make sure that the solder got to that point. See? So that's one side. And here's the other. So, sorry about that. I gotta control my so I should have left my soldering pen, my desolder sucker on, but it's all right. If I have to, I can always put it back on later. We'll let that. We'll push that away. That's the worst part is that when it dries up. Now, I can see that this didn't take so well, so I'm going to go back on this. Because one side did. This, this side's perfect. This side didn't take so well, so we're going to heat it up a little bit. Now, I've got to be careful with your fingers, because if you burn them, it kind of hurts. <laughs> Looks like it's hurting me right now. But we've got to get this point in. It's not It moving is definitely not something we want. It takes a second or two for it to dry, but it does dry up. Then what I'm going to do is, since this is not taking really well that way, you go at the bottom. It doesn't hurt so well. You put some over here. It's going to be hard for me to show you guys, so give me a minute. Whoa. That didn't help so well. Okay. And I should have got a sponge for my pen. See, I got, these things are so cheap. I just, I don't know. So, Nintendo feared this unit and that's when they made the well not really feared it I can't say feared it Nintendo was stubborn when it came down to this kind of unit here and then pretty much NES still with cartridges but after a while Sega was the one who really pioneered CDs that's the thing Sega did it I mean PlayStation did it later and that's fine but Sega was the one who actually actually did it. Okay. Looks like it's coming on now. It's like the blob. That reminds me of blob. Alright. This ain't going nowhere. I'm going to make sure but my blob here doesn't stay. See, that's the thing. When it when it comes down to soldering, you don't want to have too many blob spots. I'm gonna get rid of that. Not too many blob spots because you don't want it to. There we go. You don't want it to just mess around with the board. But look how beautiful that looks. Looks like a dub, Looks like a fucking drop. All right. Excuse my language. Sorry, guys. So 
what's going to happen next? What's going to happen next is this. Is I'm going to get a nail clipper, clip these off, and uh, what's going to happen is we're going to put this back together, and we're going to see. See, the thing that bothers me the most is this point right here. This point here bothers me the most. <laughs> ah, sorry. You bit me. You bit me. That's fine. All right. So I'm going to stop the camera, I'm going to put it back together, I'm going to clip these off, and we're going to see if she powers up. Alright guys, I'm back. I have put it all together, because um, when you put the, when you did the sticker CD, you got to make sure it's all put together, right? So, the power for the system, as well as the power of the Sega CD, needed two powers. And to turn this on, the Sega turns it on. It doesn't have its own power switch. Sega turns it on, sends a signal to Sega CD, Sega CD turns on. That's how it works. Two things I'm going to show you guys today is that I connected to this TV here. It's going to show you a little blurry, snowy picture. And the reason why is I have an analog kind of system. Honestly, it's the Nintendo con the connector. I used the Nintendo connector to connect the Genesis. Go figure. I didn't have the Genesis connector off, off the, the back. Also, for the game we're going to test is the most controversial game that was part of the Senate hearings for the ESRB, uh, Night Trap. So we're not going to play through Night Trap. We're just going to see that the system works. So I'm going to, without further ado, let's turn it on. The power comes up. Checking disc. Press start. Uh, uh oh. Looks like my customer is going to be happy. Let's see. Perfect. This is phenomenal. There we go. So, as you guys can see, um, the system works perfectly fine. It's a little blurry. Like I said, it's it's not meant to be played on a Nintendo connection. It really isn't. It shouldn't be played on it, but it's on there for now. I'm not really crazy about it. I just wanted to show you guys that it does work, and my customers are going to be extremely happy that the system is actually up and running. So, I, I appreciate you guys taking a look at the tutorial today, and uh, if you need anything in the future, Double JIT will definitely get you taken care of. Sega Control attacking. Scat Mission 230. Take care, guys. Five teenage girls have disappeared after spending the night at the old lakeshore. Hey, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I definitely enjoyed making it, and um, I wanted to leave a couple of disclaimers out there for those of you who are interested in doing this kind of repair. One is, if you haven't had any experience with soldering, get someone who is experienced to solder. A family member, a friend that does case modding. My company does it. If you want to contact me through my company, we can do it, have it shipped to you. And I'll have it shipped to us, and then we, we go ahead and ship it back and offer you a 30-day warranty on it. It is up to you. What we do, not just this console, all, all consoles get their little fixes. But the main goal I wanted to show you this video is not because of that. The main goal is the reason why the reason is I wanted to show you as my dog is playing with her toy, I wanted to show you that any broken console can be fixed. Anyone. If you go into a garage sale and you see that there's a console there and the guy tells you, hey, eight bucks, it's yours, it doesn't really work. Cool. Take the chance. It's eight dollars. My customer that got the Sega CD got that for forty bucks online because the power didn't work. And I assumed after fixing the power, I may have to replace the lens. It didn't. As you saw, I replaced the power. The lens worked perfectly fine. So the goal was to show you at least how to repair it yourself. And that's what I love doing is giving people power to do it themselves. You don't need to rely on anybody else. But you, you don't feel that strongly on how to do it, you can always contact somebody that can. Definitely people are out there that do repair these consoles. The next thing I wanted to go over with you guys is that... I've been putting out videos constantly for every week, consistently, excuse me, and I have family coming over this week coming up, so I won't be able to shoot the video, edit the video, and then put it out there, I just I just can't, because I after shooting, I have to do the edits, and after the edits, I have to put them out, and it takes a while to do all these things, so I won't be able to do a video for at least another two weeks, so this week, coming up I won't have it and the next week we'll have the next video but I have a, a couple of decisions to make because as you can see doing these videos are, are pretty cool 
but they're hard because I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do, what it what interests you, and what am I doing? You know, like I have down the pike coming up. I'm gonna mod an original Xbox so you guys can see how to do that step by step by step. I have an idea where I'm gonna make a custom um, joystick, like the, like you would find on like the little Xbox joysticks and stuff like that. I have uh, I'm gonna I want to make one and use it for my Raspberry Pi, you know, so that way you guys can check that out. It'd be pretty cool. Um, the next uh, couple of videos I was thinking about doing, and you guys can leave a comment or uh, down below if you don't like it. Um, is a history video on the establishment of the ESRB. Night Trap from the Sega CD video got me thinking, huh, that'd be pretty cool to go over and show you guys the history. And what I'm talking about is the kids that go into the GameStop and go, can I have Grand Theft Auto or can I have Deadlight or uh, what was it Daylight? And the GameStop employee goes, where's your parent? We can't give it to you unless you're over 18 and have an ID. There's a reason why they do that, and I can do a video on that. Or, I could do a review video. I have, in the first degree, you're a lawyer, kind of like Phoenix Wright, and you have to convict this guy of murder in the first. I can do a review on that game, because it's pretty funny and kind of campy. Or, Night Trap. That's highly campy. You think you thought Resident Evil acting was bad? Take a look at that game. It's just worse. So, I could do that one. Um... There's a lot of things I could do, and I'm going to decide on how what the videos are going to take. I gave you guys those options as well. If you want to leave me some suggestions or comments down below, please do so. I definitely am open for that. So, once again, I'd like you to subscribe. Thumbs up this video. Leave a comment down below. Hit that bell so that way you know when the videos do come out. And I'll see you guys soon. Take care.